Crimean War is often forgotten by historians and AP World students because of its position in historical timeline, lack of movie adaptations, and that it's not called World War 0.5. But there's a good reason it wasn't called that, because besides standing silly, it didn't involve the world being at war at all. Now the key to the conflict included the Holy Lands of Israel, Palestine, and Lebanon. And this angered the Russian Empire. A lot. Russia didn't really care about the church's religious interests. They cared about the Dardanelles instead. Controlling the Dardanelles would shift the balance of power into Russia's favor again. In order to accomplish this, they used the sensitive religious pretext of Muslim Ottoman control of Christian Holy Lands. Having undergone a revolution 50 years ago, Napoleon III had tried to answer the Eastern question. The Eastern question being, where would the Ottoman lands go to once the empire collapsed? Historians suggest that Russia was primarily interested in protecting the Orthodox Church and was willing to utilize force. But the Sultan was a smart guy and he knew that letting Russia dictate the country would revoke him his rights and probably have the people of his empire end up unhappy. Nevertheless, after Russia made similar demands that were turned down by the Ottoman government, their disagreement led to some angry political figures and the deployment of Russian troops into Turkey. In play of anger and bravado, the Russian Empire aggressively occupied the vassal states of Agavia and Wallachia in July of 1853. Now Britain was content with control over the seas, but watching Russia's exploding shells annihilate seafaring ships made the British wary of their navy's competence, and feeling threatened caused them to ally with the Ottoman Empire. Now while the Ottomans were thrilled and expecting a British support, England was in it more to prevent the misbalance of power that would result if Russia controlled Ottoman lands, and not because they were BFFs. Meanwhile, Austria was doing its best Switzerland impression, but was passive-aggressive enough to threaten to enter the war. This caused Russia to evacuate conquered Moldavia and Wallachia, where Austrian troops were stationed. In September of 1854, Allied troops landed on the Crimea, hoping to capture Sevastopol, where the Russians remained fortified. Soldiers of both sides suffered through harsh which Russian winters and searing hot summer heats, with an insufficient amount of supplies on both sides. Throughout the attempted siege of Sevastopol were a number of battles, including those of the river Alma, Inkerman, and more notably, Balaklava. Because of an unfortunate miscommunication, British troops charged down a narrow valley flanked by Russian guns on both sides, with nearly every soldier dying on the inattentional attack. The official title of these British troops was the Light Brigade, and their ambush into the Valley of Death gave rise to the famous poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade, by Alfred Lord Tennyson, which has gone on to inspire more recent music, novels, and films. In it, he writes, For the Light Brigade, was there a man dismayed? No, though the soldiers knew, some had blundered. There's not to make reply, there's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. Into the Valley of Death rode the 600. In spite of the general lack of concern with deaths, poor leadership, and diseases, Sevastopol was captured on the 9th of September, 1855. The capture of the city and Tsar Alexander II's ascension led to peace negotiations, and the Treaty of Paris was signed. In the treaty, Russia was forced to abandon its claims of protecting Christians in the Ottoman Empire and leave the role to France. Russia also lost influence over Romanian principalities, which, along with Serbia, were given greater independence. Political reforms came to be called in Russia because of its loss in the war. The Crimean War was really the first modern war with advances in photography and media that allowed the British population to stay updated on Russian advances. That's enough of Al's monotone voice for one day, so let me tell you guys about the Crimean War's historical significance. With their technological innovations, the British were easily able to ration supplies by using railroads and they were the first to use trains in warfare. The advances in media were led by the first war correspondent, William Russell, a reporter for the Times of London. Information about the war reached the population from an independent party instead of official government messages. Public opinion would not have a much larger role on government policy. Russia's defeat would also convince Tsar Alexander II to emancipate serfdom as he saw the superior abilities of free soldiers from the French and British armies. The defeat would convince the Tsar that changes were needed for Russia to remain a global powerhouse. Russia's defeat also weakened their military dominance and would lead to the complete misbalance of power, while indirectly beginning the foundation of the Russian Revolution. Florence Nightingale, a volunteer nurse, would arrive at the front of war to only find facilities in horrid condition, and would reform the hygiene of makeshift hospitals while working to separate the religious stigma that existed with medicine. Mary C. Clough would establish the British Hotel near Balaclava to provide comfortable quarters for sick officers, and would often visit while under fire to nurse the wounded. Until next time, this is William Trant, signing out.